Hello, I'm Nate Lex. I'm straight, I'm male, I use the pronouns he, him, his. I'm Christian, I'm middle class, and I'm a student. Now, before you think anything of me, I'd like to address some stereotypes that are somewhat associated with the information that I've just shared with you. Often people think because I'm Christian that I hate gays, which I definitely do not. Sometimes people think because I'm male or because I'm white that I think I'm better than either another race or another gender or whatever someone identifies as. And I do not believe I'm that at all. I would like to treat all people with respect and that is why I'm addressing this issue today. And addressing my appearance and how I look right now, I'm either a fuckboy or a massive nerd. I'd like to think I'm the latter, but do whatever you will with that information. So what if I told you that I've never won a fight in my life? You probably wouldn't think I'm that manly, would you? Or would you? Because what if I told you that I've never lost a fight? Would that make you think I'm more manly then? Well, what if I told you I've never been in a fight? I've never needed to throw fists. I've never been in one. That probably gives you another idea than the first three you thought. But if your definition of manly is being able to win a fight, then I think ours are pretty different. Let me explain. The reason I bring this up is I will be covering the topic of toxic masculinity. Now, from the definition I pulled from the internet, toxic masculinity is used in the social sciences to describe traditional norms of behavior among men in contemporary American and European society that are associated with detrimental societal, or social, excuse me, and psychological effects. Now, the reason I wanna bring this up is because that interferes with how people grow up and people are subconsciously taught things that are really toxic to our society. So I'd like to clear those things up right now and show you why they have a negative effect in movies the five main points of toxic masculinity or the five different things that occur are the suppression of emotion, the encouragement of violence, the discouragement to seek help, homophobia, and misogyny. Now the first two kind of go hand in hand, so we should start there. Suppression of emotion and encouragement of violence can be seen in films such as, and I wrote them down, Braveheart, The Green Mile, Shane, Good Will Hunting, and The Midnight Cowboy. All of these movies are movies where people can be seen suppressing their emotion just because they were told men don't cry. Violence is a bit easier to spot in movies just because it's a visible aspect that we can see occurring such as throwing punches or pushing people off of buildings. And we can see these type of things in Fight Club and Live Free Die Hard. But I mean, who wouldn't want to be Bruce Willis punching somebody in the face? Am I right? The problem with this is when it's marketed to our youth or when our youth find a way to view these things, they're not understanding the reason between fighting justice and overkill. These films display instances where people are taught to retaliate because someone has wronged them. And while violence isn't always the answer, and most of the time isn't, that's debatable and controversial, and I'm not gonna get into that, but how often are we taught to fight back, but out of just malice or revenge, instead of being educated on why justice should be served? Discouragement to seek help. Now, obviously this should go unsaid, but the youth of today doesn't have the brain capacity necessarily, or lacks the experience to realize that it's totally okay to seek help. And even further, that feeling weak and feeling like you can't do it on your own shouldn't be a problem. Just because you can't handle something on your own or need someone's help with something doesn't mean that you're any less valuable. The last two also go hand in hand and one kind of leads into the other and that's homophobia and misogyny. Now I can understand where this will get controversial so stick with me and I've actually written this all down and I might be reading off this screen because it's a lot to cover and I wanted to address this subject with as much respect to that community as possible because I do not belong to it and it can seen as an attack on them if I am not respectful of that. So let me read. In film, gay men are often portrayed as having feminine characteristics and qualities. This is not necessarily a bad thing if they are displayed with respect and are displayed equally to their counterpart. The portion of this idea that is incorrect is assuming that homosexuality and feminine characteristics or qualities are correlated, which they are not. But because most homosexual men in movies are seen as feminine, the audience lacks the experience to think otherwise. This does not justify their actions or thoughts, but it does give us an idea of how we can educate them further. Gay men can have masculine and feminine characteristics, and that's A-OK, -okay. that's totally fine. What movies shouldn't do is display these qualities as lesser than masculine. This leads us into misogyny. The prejudice against women or feminine characteristics. Not all women are feminine, and that's also perfectly fine. People can be themselves, it's fine. There are two big problems when you display women or feminine characteristics as lesser than their masculine counterparts. The first problem is that you are not giving people with feminine qualities the respect they deserve. Feminine and masculine qualities should not determine the amount of respect that you give to a person. The second issue is treating femininity like it's a bad thing. People with feminine characteristics are worth no less than people with masculine characteristics. Anyone can display feminine and masculine characteristics in different situations, and that's also perfectly fine. You need those characteristics to address different situations. To address all the issues I've discussed, we must attack them at the source, and that's children and their developing minds. Kids learn by example, and they learn a lot while they're growing up. 
not just their ABCs and 123s. They learn manners and they learn how to respect people. That means that we must teach children that it's okay to cry. It's not okay to lash out at someone who's wronged you. Sometimes you're not strong enough to handle something and that seeking help is totally okay. That displaying feminine qualities as a man doesn't make you any less of a man, and that being a woman doesn't make you any less valuable than being a man. Everyone's valuable in their own way, no matter what characteristics or qualities they show. So it starts at the source, and we need to teach our kids that. And I hope that if this is a problem today, which it definitely is, that we can fix it in the future by how we raise our kids. Thank you.